Family Theater presents Ruth Hussey, Lee Bowman, and Roddy McDowell. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Ruth Hussey and Lee Bowman in In Shining Armor. To introduce the drama, here is your host, Roddy McDowell. Thank you, Tony Lafano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family Theatre urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our drama, starring Lee Bowman as Bill and Ruth Hussey as Linda in In Shining Armour. <laughs> The scene, the suburban home of Linda Moncton, separated wife of Bill Moncton. The time, evening in early summer. Mommy! Oh, Mommy! I'm in here, darling. Hello, Mommy. Gosh, where did I tell you all the Daddy and I did today? Now, Judy, it's your bedtime. Daddy wants to know if I could come to him on Sunday instead of Saturday. Well, I don't see why not. Mommy, why do I have to go alone to visit Daddy? Why don't you come, too, sometimes? Oh, no, Judy, that... that wouldn't work out. N now, tell me what happened today. Oh, not everything, because it's bedtime. Just what was best fun of all. You mean best, best? Best, best. Well, I guess it was a story Daddy told me. What was it about? Oh, all about a knight in shining armor and a beautiful princess. And you know what? What? The princess's name was Linda, just the same as yours, Mommy. You know, I think I'd like to hear this story. Do you suppose you could remember it? Sure I could. Y you really want to hear it? Yes, Judy, I do want to hear it. Well, once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess named Linda, and there was a knight in shining armor. Who came out of the West. How did you know? Oh, I, I, I didn't. I just guessed. Go on, darling. Well, one night in a big castle, a lot of knights and ladies were gathered around the round table, and the princess was there. Of course, the knight in shining armor, he just come out of the West, so he was a, a stranger-like at the round table. And, well, at the very special magic hour of midnight, when important things are supposed to happen... <laughs> The Jeffrey party, oui, monsieur. At the round table there on the terrace. Uh, thank you, they're expecting me. Uh, excuse me, but is this, uh... Well, you, you're Brenda, Tony's sister. If you mean Linda, you've got the right girl. Yeah, that's it, Linda. <laughs> I remember the picture on, on his table at Stanford. Stanford? Oh, then you're Bill Moncton. From out of the West. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down. We've been hoping you'd turn up. The others are all dancing. Uh, would, uh, would you like to? Oh, thanks, but I can't. I twisted my ankle the other day. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, it's nothing. Will you order whatever you like? No hurry. Tony said you'd opened an office here. Yes, yes. I, uh, I've got the office plus a fine assortment of important-looking law books. In fact, there's only one thing I'm short on. Clients? <laughs> You're psychic. <laughs> but Tony told me you'd made such a fine start out west. Why did you decide to come here? Well, you know, I, I've been wondering that myself. At least, uh, till about five minutes ago, I was wondering. Oh, and then you knew? Then I knew. Oh. How's California? I, I love it out there. Do you know Carmel? Know it? Do you? Oh, we spent a summer there when I was 15, and I decided I was in love with one of the captains in the Sicilian fishing fleet. <laughs> oh, he didn't know it, of course, but it was painfully real to me. I used to stand up on the cliff watching the boats sail out of the bay and just knew I couldn't live till they came back again. <laughs> 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 what, what, what's the matter? Uh, the matter? Nothing. So, uh, so you're Linda. Mm-hmm. 
Hey, Bill, you got here. Hey, Tony, how are you? Glad to see you. Mm -hmm. It's great to see you. Oh, you and Bill found each other, Linda. Yes, Tony, we did. We found each other. They tell me it's only the lowest breed of man who holds a girl's hand during a concert, especially a girl he's known only six days. You're right. What, uh, what's he playing up there, a violin or an accordion? Personally, I wouldn't know. I think it's a zither. Let's, uh, let's go after this number. Hmm? But the man's a great artist. Well, I've just found out that love is deaf as well as blind. Come on, we're going to get out of here. Just think, Bill, if it weren't for you, I'd have been at a football game today. I and 90,000 others. Oh, that's the conventional way to spend Thanksgiving. Besides, I'd rather have you to myself. And I did want to show you the farm. Do you like it? Do you uh, think it would do for a summer place? I can't imagine anything more perfect. Good, then I'll buy it. But, Bill... Uh, never mind. Maybe if you won't marry me for my face, you will for my farm. Anyway, I, I'm not overlooking any chances. <laughs> The New Year's almost here, Bill. Don't you want to go inside? No. You're uh, not cold, are you? No. Linda. Hmm? It doesn't make sense. You know that. One minute you admit that you love me. The next you say that you aren't sure you should marry me. Darling, it's only in bad novels that saying you love someone automatically leads to a wedding. It isn't as simple as that. And I do love you. More than I've ever loved anyone. Almost as much as I ever thought I could love anyone. Almost? Well, there's one thing missing, Bill. You don't need me. Of course I do. No, you don't. Not actually. Oh, perhaps it would make you happier to have me as your wife, but it wouldn't make you... Well, I, I, I don't know how to say this. It, it, it wouldn't make you any stronger. <laughs> Well, it's the first time I ever knew a girl wanted weakness as in a man. Well, she does, and usually it's there. Some chink in her knight's armor, some hmm? quality lacking in him that she has and, and can contribute to the marriage. But you, Bill, there are no chinks in your armor. It's strong and solid and shining. You're a world unto yourself. Maybe it's foolish, but that's what makes me hesitate. Linda, I don't any more know what you're talking about than you do. I love you. I'll always love you. I want to marry you, and I... Happy New Year! Well, there it is. Happy New Year, my dear. Say yes. Now, Linda, it's the perfect moment. And I'll be as weak or, or as strong as you want me to be. I, I promise you that. No, darling, you'll just be you. And I guess I'll take a chance on that. Darling. Princess Linda loved the knight so awful much she couldn't say no to him, so she said yes, and then they were married. But what about them living happily ever after, Judy? Did Daddy mention that? Uh-uh, he wouldn't. I asked him, but he said not till next week. He said this was a continuous story. Oh, I see. Gosh, I want to hear what else happens, don't you? Yes, I do. And now off to bed with you, young lady. Come along. Gosh, Mommy, don't you want to hear the second chapter? Daddy told me a lot more today. Of course I do. Here, suppose you sit right down here beside me. Mm, that's swell. Now let's have chapter two. The knight in shining armor and the Princess Linda were married. We learned that last week. Then what? Well, then they went on their honeymoon to another country on a big boat. I'll bet it was a Viking boat, huh, Mommy? Or maybe it was the Elizabeth. Hmm, maybe. But anyway, when they got home again, the knight decided to start on the quest of high-up castle. 
So he joined a different army than the one he'd been fighting for, and he came home to tell the prince... It means less money than private practice, Linda, to start, anyway. But it also means a chance to get somewhere politically. After all, Hudson really got his start as a special prosecutor right in this town. Hudson? Oh, you mean Governor Hudson? Yes. Oh, you're looking a long way ahead. Hmm. <laughs> Anything wrong with that? Of course not. It, it's only that... Well, it's only what? Well, as a defense attorney, you can more or less pick your own cases, defend only the people you actually believe are innocent. But as a... As a special prosecutor, I'd have to convict people who are guilty. What's the difference? But suppose they're not. Guilty, I mean. You'd still have to try for a conviction, wouldn't you? Linda, look. The law... Bill, the one thing I'm fighting for is for you to be free. Free? Well, what's this got to do with my freedom? Everything. Oh, well, maybe I'm saying this badly, darling, but your life, our lives, your... Well, they're, they're getting out of focus. In a way, the farm is an example. We, we were going to do so many things. Fix the old mill and make cider in the autumn, and you, you were even going to dam up the stream for a swimming hole. And we'll still do those things. It's just... Well, it's... It's just happened that things kept coming up. Something will always come up. More than ever if you take this new job. Oh, it's not that your work isn't important, Bill, and I'm not thinking of myself, but you have such a capacity for enjoying life. Oh, don't let that get away from you. Linda. Linda, you don't understand. Yes, I do. And the final decision is up to you. It, it's only that... Oh, Bill, you're right, I guess. You must know best. I believe I do. Anyway, I'm glad you talked it over with me first. Well, Linda, there really wasn't much to talk over. As a matter of fact, I've already accepted. You've ac accepted? I told Johnson this afternoon. Oh. Oh, well, well, that's fine, Bill. I'm, I'm sure it's for the best. This means a start on the, on the road you seem to want to follow. <laughs> Hello? Tony? It's Linda. How would you like to escort your sister to the theater? Yes, Bill got tickets, but he can't get away. The Parker case, I think. Well, the jury's out, and he has to stay there in case they come in. It... No, I don't know why a deputy can't do it either. It's, it's bound to be another conviction. It... Fed up? Of course I'm not. It's Bill's job. He... Well, can you make it tonight? Good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry I've made us late for the reception. It won't take me long to change. I, uh... Well, Linda, you're not dressed. Well, we're not going to the reception, Bill. Not going? Oh, because I'm late? Well, you know how the governor's shindigs are. They never start on time anyway. Well, I called and made our apologies. You what? When? This afternoon, hours ago. I wanted one evening of my husband's time for myself, so I stole it. You, you can indict me for it tomorrow. Linda... I left a lot of work tonight because I'm supposed to go to the governor's. You know as well as I that the Matthews girl comes to trial next week. And every hour lost from working on that case means less chance of a conviction. And you're sure there should be a conviction? What are you talking about? Jane Matthews' mother came here today. Jane Matthews' mother? Well, you don't mean that you saw her, that you talked to her. Well, of course I talked to her. And she swears her daughter's innocent. And I believe her. Linda, the girl is guilty. Naturally, your mother would lie. Well, isn't it possible that she wasn't lying? I don't want to discuss it. But isn't it possible that... Oh, Bill, it, it, it doesn't matter. I, I don't want to talk about Jane Matthews. Some other time, maybe, but not tonight, please. Tonight, let's forget about convictions or, or governors or anything, except a couple of people named Bill and Linda. Linda, I'd love to, but we can't. We've got to go to the governor's reception. All right, Bill. All right. We'll have other nights. We... <laughs> Please, leave me alone. I... Wonder you... You're crying. Oh, it's nothing that matters. I... Oh, maybe it does. Maybe you'll have a much better chance to be elected. I can see the pictures in the paper. Candidate Moncton and family. Linda. 
Linda, what are you talking about? Oh, I know it's not important. Not nearly as important as the governor's reception or the case of the state versus Jane Matthews. But I, I did want to tell you tonight, Bill, I'm going to have a baby. And so the princess was the mommy of a little teeny princess. I asked Daddy what her name was, and he said, why don't we call her Judy? Isn't that funny? I like people in stories to be named after me, don't you? Yes, dear, I, I think it's awfully nice. Well, that's all there is till next week. Oh, except about the knight's big battle. He won, and that made him the most important knight of all, except the one who lived in High Up Castle. Do you think our knight will ever get to live there? I think it's quite likely. You know... I was just thinking. What? I, I, I like the story Daddy's telling, but it's kind of sad for a fairy story, isn't it, Mommy? Yes, Judy. But that's the way some stories are, darling. And there's nothing you can do about it. me to the athletic club, Mommy. And did you like the story this time? Well, well kind of. Only he said it was the last chapter and it, it doesn't end right. Doesn't it, Judy? Oh, that's too bad. Suppose you tell me. Well, remember last time a baby princess came to live with a knight in shining armor and Mrs. Knight in shining armor? A little, the little princess Judy. That's right. Well, then, let me see. Oh! The knight loved the new little princess, but he never got to see her mommy much, because he was fighting more monsters than ever. So the big princess got lonelier and lonelier, and he hadn't been for a brother. But Linda, why shouldn't I have a talk with Bill? No, Tony. I don't think he quite realizes how much you are alone. Now, tonight, for instance... Well, it's not your affair. But I feel responsible in a way. After all, I... Tony! Hmm? Not quite so fast, you mind? Oh, forget it, Linda. I could drive this road in my sleep. But uh, about Bill... Bill's all right. It's me. I should be glad I'm married to a man who knows where he's going and who will let nothing on earth stop him from getting there. The governor should be. Well, there's a swell chance of it. I was talking to some newspaper men just the other day. They said that with his past record and any kind of a publicity break between now and August, Bill's a cinch. Tony, look out. There's a dog. Linda, let go of my arm. Tony, look out. The car's coming in. <laughs> I don't believe it, Bill. I, I won't believe it. What else can I do, Linda? The boy was riding and the other car's badly hurt. If he dies, my department has to prosecute Tony. Remember, he already has three convictions of reckless driving against him. We can't ignore that. I've told you a hundred times the accident was my fault. I grabbed his arm. A, a dog ran in front of the car. Tony hadn't seen it. And you think a jury will believe that? It's true. But you can't prove it. Wait. It isn't just that a jury wouldn't believe me. You don't believe me yourself. I'm sorry, Linda. Since Tony's your brother, I understand you're wanting to protect him, but... Bill, even if that boy does die, you're not going to prosecute Tony for manslaughter. I'll have no choice. Of course, I, I won't handle the case myself, but I will have to turn it over to one of my deputies. I wish there was some way out. There is. You could resign, Bill. You could defend and you could get him off. I don't expect you to understand this, Linda. But I happen to think the job I have to do is even more important than your brother. Or me. I didn't say that. Well, I did. The job you have to do. You've honestly made yourself believe that, haven't you? You're the torchbearer, the champion of truth and right and justice. Well, you're not, Bill. You're blind and selfish and you care about only one thing and that's your own success. Linda. Tony doesn't matter now. 
In fact, he's a help. It would be marvelous publicity to convict your own brother-in-law. It would mean a hundred thousand votes on election day. I'd better go, Linda. We'll discuss this again when you're less upset. No, we won't, because we're through discussing anything. I said once that you didn't need me. Well, that was true, but only half true, because you've made me sure today of something I've suspected for a long time. I don't need you. Linda, listen to me. No, go ahead with your plans for the prosecution, because if Tony comes to trial, I'm going to fight you. I'm going into court to tell the truth. And trial or no trial, win or lose, it's over between us. Now and forever. <laughs> Hey, Bill, it's good news. Collins just called from the hospital. That boy's definitely out of danger. You won't have to indict Tony Jeffries after all. Yeah? That's great. Sure it is. I... Hey, uh, what's that you're reading? A subpoena, Joe, a subpoena. Haven't you ever seen one before? Oh, what case? A new case. Moncton versus Moncton. Oh. A legal separation. Oh, I'm sorry, old man. That's tough. I didn't ask you for your opinion. Uh, I'm sorry, pal. I, I guess you better leave me alone. And the knight and the princess found out they weren't happy together anymore. And the princess Linda moved away. But the knight kept going on toward the hill where a high up castle is. And... Daddy says that's the end of the story. Well, it isn't quite the end, Judy. When you see Daddy next time, you tell him Mommy said he left out one awfully important thing. What's that? That deep in her heart, the Princess Linda wishes the night well. She hoped that somehow he'd find happiness. And most of all, that he'd finally get to the top of the hill where High Up Castle stands. <laughs> An answer? About the story. Remember what you told me to tell him? Well, I did. Only you said that the knight changed his mind about going to High Up Castle. Changed his mind? Uh-huh. Because he said the knight got to looking over his shining armor, and he found a big hole in it, right where his heart was supposed to be. And so he decided not to climb the hill to the castle after all. He said he couldn't without Princess Linda beside him. Is that what he said, Judy? You sure? Quite sure? I'm awful sure. Gosh, M Mommy, you're crying. Yes. Did I make you cry? Well, yes, you did, Judy. But I could hug you for it. You can't do it, Bill. You can't withdraw now. You've got to run for governor. No, Linda. You told me once exactly what I really am. I didn't see it then. I do now. Maybe it took loneliness to show it to me. Oh, I was upset. The things I may have said, no, I... No, what you I... said was true. I sold myself on the idea that I was the, the people's champion. But I forgot that to help people, you've got to understand them first. To know them and their problems. I never thought of that, Linda. I guess I was too busy thinking of Bill Moncton as governor. And you should be governor. You're the man for the job, the best man they can find. I don't think so, Linda. Not anymore. Oh, Bill, don't you see? You found the only things you lacked, humility and understanding. I might lose them again. But you couldn't. Not if I'm there to remind you. Linda. I lied, Bill. I was wrong. There's nothing for me without you. Nothing. Oh, darling. Oh, Bill. <laughs> Bill. I've missed you so terribly. I know. Bill, your story. D did you know Judy was telling it to me? I, uh, I hope she would. Look, she's asleep. Oh, we've got to tell her. Judy. Judy. Judy, Judy wake up. Oh, Mommy. Oh, Daddy. Hello, darling. Did you decide how the story ended? Yes, Judy. We did. I is it happily forever after? 
forever after. That's good. Good night. This is Roddy McDowell again. Come Labor Day, come school days. Whether you live here in California where the weather gives little warning that the summer is over, or whether you live in parts of the country where very gentle signs of fall weather announce that vacation time is closing, Labor Day is the great divide. And for youth from primary school to the university, and for parents as well, the school year is definitely in. We call all this actual going to school to learn formal education. Formal education is a blessing so great that we must never underestimate its value. We reverence it and thank God for it. And we thank God that we live in a country where it is so widespread and obtainable. I hope that it won't sound uh, preachy to put in a word for informal education and what that means. It means that we learn not only from books and instructors, but from every casual word and look and gesture and attitude with which we come into contact. Informal education is not dealt out lesson by lesson, assignment by assignment, term by term, in calculated stages. It's breathed in, absorbed, is taken into the blood, and is not just a matter of the head, but of the heart and soul. It comes by chance and fortune. It is gained outside of school, in the marketplace, in the street, in groups, and in the private sessions of thought which each one of us sometimes has with himself. But the home is the university as well as the grammar school of informal education. The home and the family. And no home is too poor, no home is too overdressed with wealth and fortune to have God as a teacher. The family, rich or poor, which gathers together to ask the guidance of God and his instruction in the basic and ultimate values of life is the unique school. We are all continuously the learners and one important chapter of learning which we can master is the family that prays together, stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Ruth Hussey and Lee Bowman in In Shining Armor. Roddy McDowell was your host. Others in our cast were Ann Whitfield, Robert Cole, and George Taylor. The script was written by True Boardman and Jack Van Ostrand, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed for Family Theater by Joseph F. Mansfield. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program by the mutual network which responds to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our family theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lofrano expressing the wish of family theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home, and inviting you to join us next week at the same time when family theater will present Maureen O'Sullivan in the hand of San Pierre. Join us, won't you? Family Theater is broadcast throughout the world and originates in the Hollywood studios of the world's largest network. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.